हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू सीक्रेट टू सक्सेस एपिसोड सेवन एंड दिस टाइम आई विथ मी ग्रैंड मास्टर दीपन चक्रवर्ती हु इज वेरी फेमस चेस प्लेयर इन इंडियन चेस वेलकम अन्ना फॉर द फॉर कमिंग सो यू आई एम ग्रेट एंड ओके रिसेंटली यू गॉट सिक सो हाउ आर यू डूइंग राइट नाउ एंड हाउ इज योर हेल्थ एट द करेंट मूवमेंट नाउ इज मच बेटर much better much better yeah, yeah. thank you thank you <laughs> so okay then let's uh, start with your journey so how did you like at what age did you start chess and um, like how did you come to know about chess yeah, i know how to move the pieces and all around uh, i think when i was 3 and off 4 something like that i know to move the pieces because my dad used to play chess but uh, the first tournament was when i was 6 years old Oh. that's how it all started yeah so like who taught you chess and uh, like uh, like your father taught you chess and then like you immediately yeah, my, uh, liked it or uh, like you didn't have the how did the interest grow slowly see to be honest i, I don't remember exactly how my interest uh, uh, i got interested in chess but uh, i was interested in generally in sports so my when my and uh, obviously when my dad taught me chess uh, it was really uh, interesting because uh, I, i enjoy solving puzzles and all. so it's kind of uh, in my zone let me i will say so that's how probably it started and uh, at the age of 6 i started part because uh, in, at that time in madurai i was uh, studying my dolphin meditation school that uh, they used to conduct these chess tournaments district level chess tournaments Yeah. So they had a tournament, so I participated, and uh, probably I think in first tournament I won some prize, first or second I remember exactly. So then you know, obviously you're more uh, into it, and uh, it all started like that. Yes. Yeah, and like, what do you think is the ideal age for a like player to start chess? like let's say some parent is watching this show and uh, they would like uh, to teach their kids what do you think is ideal age to learn chess i think if you want to become a professional player and uh, um uh, if you have really very high ho- uh, hopes in chess that you want to become a world class elite player i think you have to start chess before Okay, I would uh, before ten is fine. I think uh, people generally say six, eight, but I think um, that mature you that maturity comes after I think around um, after ten. So just before ten, maybe eight, nine, even ten is fine. I guess I know players who have started very, I mean, very like the age of fifteen and all, and they have been okay, become a grand master, all those stuff, but. to become probably to become uh, to enter that elite group maybe it's always better to keep age in your side yeah if you start uh, at the very early age you will have more experience yeah apparently all this time my mic was off and people could not hear my questions <laughs> so oh. anyway, <laughs> so anyway so, let's continue <laughs> sorry <laughs> sorry guys i forgot to switch on my mic actually So anyway, let's continue. So you started uh, playing. Uh, like actually, I was also training in Madurai with uh, Gausser, uh, like next to that Dolphin School. So like uh, during the early years, how did you work on chess, and uh, how many hours did you put, uh, uh, like put your work on chess and so on? In early days, yeah, I used to spend uh, quite uh, some time on chess. Uh, Ah, hard on chess because uh, I still believe that uh, I, I used to work. Uh, definitely, I used to work uh, around six to eight hours at my younger age. And uh, you know, um, let me be honest. It was always uh, my working time was like a uh, chat. Sometimes it's six to eight hours. Some days even one to two hours like that. Always it has been always. It's. Uh, I'm just being honest. Yeah. 
so okay let's come to this favorite topic like your attitude is like very unique uh, i don't think anyone has it right. <laughs> like this carefree attitude you don't worry about anything you always have this smile and uh, you don't worry about results so much so how did you develop this attitude first of all see of course sometimes it hurts but still you you put a smile on your face right it's a basic uh, quality i guess that every human being needs and apart from that i'm generally i believe uh, you know certain things is there for you it will come for you you have to what is there in your hand is you have to take hard work hard and uh, then just enjoy life that's all you can do i guess so that's how it is when i'm playing chess or i'm playing a tournament everything it's very life on chess i consider it's very uh, uh, you know it's relatable yeah so you can't play chess differently and live life differently i guess and long back kramnik also told this chess okay there was some internet issue so people could okay oh. i didn't hear the answer properly but generally yeah you were saying something like uh, uh, something about kramnik i said yeah 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 what i said is that uh, long back kramnik also said that uh, uh, in life and chess uh, it's not different like uh, uh, you are still in life it comes while you are playing uh, chess it's more rela- it's, it's relatable yeah and uh, so yeah, like, like uh, if uh, people want to like develop this careful a uh, carefree attitude or you know that relaxed attitude what should they do oh, no there is no written uh, uh, exact uh, things that you should do this then you will get this and all i don't think so it's about uh, just uh, enjoying life and uh, coming terms with the basics of life and uh, as i said do your best give your best and hope for the best that's all you can do by this and always uh, be happy and uh, you know there is uh, always a chance that uh, uh, the, some uh, circumstances may push you uh, sometimes you will feel high sometimes you will feel low so it's very important to know the balance and maintain the balance Yeah. Uh, it is the most important thing not just in chess also in life figures and okay you told me once that uh, okay you were in uh, 2500 for a uh, i mean like 2400 for a long time and uh, recently you have crossed this 2550 barrier and like you told me one of the reasons you got it uh, you did it be, was it be, it's because that you lost uh, all the expectations and you are playing more freely and so on so like when did you decide that uh, not having goals or something and playing this kind of uh, chess helps you rather than having goals and stuff see it's um there are so many things see i i been grandmaster at the age of 19 in 2006 okay uh and uh, actually it's uh, it's not uh, like when becoming grandmaster i uh, from 2400 to 2500 i went quite fast uh, in a couple of months i guess but uh, uh i think probably for 10 years then i was in this bracket of 2470 to 2520 all those uh, 25 20 25 a lot of things we can say but uh, something was uh, missing and something was pulling me back i think the most important thing uh, at that time you know, when i was growing up i guess uh, i wanted to become a grandmaster was there in my mind but i never thought of uh, i never realized that grandmaster is the first step there is a lot more beyond grand- becoming a grandmaster in chess but while i was growing up you know there was not much of uh, uh, help I, i was fortunate to get my very good uh, people to help me in chess but even then there was not um, 
uh, well, com uh, comparing nowadays, those years was different. Like uh, uh, only thought in my mind was to become a grand master. Uh, that itself, uh, where I made a mistake, I guess, because grand master and people who are watching, I would like to say grand master is just a stepping stone. The real uh, growth is only after becoming grand master. So, so, so to realize that uh, itself uh, took me some time. Like uh, become grand master, and I was so happy, and probably that had an impact. And uh, you know, then life goes on. You um, so many things happens in a personal life as well. So there was a, like I said, ups and downs. And then um, and uh, uh, after quite, I think uh, in 2016, I guess or uh, uh, 17, I I just decided that I'm not going to at least uh, uh, take draw or offer a draw just. To, going to play all games. Now, I think it's, it makes a lot of sense and it's very important for a budding chess player that because I generally feel, um, you know, if you know uh, chess and uh, if you're reasonably good, if your day is good, you can even uh, draw against some elite grandmaster. But to, but to beat them, you, re you need real skills. You know, I, I, I find some many times people say, oh, I drew with 2600, sometimes you have 2700 or two, three times. Okay, it, ha it can happen, I'm saying, it can happen because chess is such kind of game. But if you are able to beat 2600 or 2700 at regular basis, then it is really something. Even if you lose a couple of games, but if you are able to beat them con consistently, then... Uh, that is very, very important. It shows that uh, uh, you, there is a chance for you to break that elite group. So uh, all these things I realized uh, quite after some time, but then always I'm a very positive person. So then, okay. It's always good to begin from wherever you are. Just need to begin. So I started... Uh, not accepting draws or um, okay, if position is nothing, just dead draw, then maybe, yeah. If there is even a uh, small chances, I thought I will take even risk and I will play that. And uh, that's how probably I crossed 2550, I guess. And, uh, actually, uh, for the last, uh, I think, uh, last one year or something, I was playing really well, I guess. Uh, suddenly, this pandemic. Yeah, but anyway, it also helps me to uh, see a lot of chess now. Yeah, uh, I'm seeing, okay, I'm, let's see uh, when it will, uh, hopefully, maybe after six months, I would think they will start and uh, probably uh, we will be see, uh, seeing each other like good old days, not in this computer screen. Yeah. <laughs> So to be clear, uh, like, do you have goals right now to reach 2600 or you don't have any goals at all in terms of chess? Uh, uh, honestly, I would, uh, if, if you uh, want me to say that, I would say that uh, my only goal is that whenever I'm playing chess, the particular game, I, have, I want to do well and um, I want to create something over the board and uh, I want to enjoy chess. That's what I realized and that is what very important. It is easy to say actually, but it's very difficult to do that. It's not so easy because automatically you will have that pressure of reaching 26, 27. Youngsters, I'm saying, I uh, want to do well in tournament, but um, these are all the, the things you need to develop. Uh, If you are able to do well in that particular game, naturally your result is going to go up. Go up yeah? So, like you, yes, you said that you don't have like particular goals and you try to create uh, this something new. So, let's say you are playing... No, it's it not that particular goals. The goal is that. The goal is that to play each and every game uh, well and give your yeah. best. I think it is... Uh, one of the most important goal, I guess. It's very yeah. important. 
but okay people have like result oriented goals like uh, let's say they are playing a tournament uh, some people have goals to win the tournament and uh, okay so different people have different goals and uh, coming to you like you like uh, you are focusing on the quality of the games so let's say you are uh, on 5 on 5 in some tournament like suddenly you get this uh, thing right to i'm going to win the tournament or uh, i'm going to like i'm playing so well so how do you deal with that situations so uh, it's a million dollar question say question i think because no uh, no one right now like no person can ask, uh, answer this question no in a clear manner because it's always that pressure is that without pressure there is no sport it's that but it it all it all comes down to how you handle the pressure yeah nerves um many many a times i have seen this that uh, not just me in particular uh, uh, in tournaments um when a guy is required uh, uh, to win or on the, on the your opponent needs only a draw it's 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 it's, it's, it's kind of very tricky because uh, most of the time i have i have seen that guy who who is uh, who have to win to take a first place uh, succeed you would have seen and yeah. especially in uh, the, uh, in uh, uh, age group that category tournaments or in uh, international open uh, rating tournaments because you know it's the psychologically it is uh, uh, there you know that uh, okay you just need a draw to become a champion yeah okay. uh, uh but the other guy is uh, uh, has got nothing to lose he just have to win otherwise uh, he has got no chance so these are all the things you know that uh, it is important to uh, have that uh, skill. It, is, it is a skill basically i guess that uh, you need to have that um, each and uh, every game you are going to give best but yeah pressure is there it's all about how we are going to handle your pressure yeah if you are able to do that uh, well but uh, well uh, you will succeed but it's 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 easy to say you know uh, as i said and also you know um, i i guess in many things it's very very important for an individual to find what is working for him that is most important thing i guess because um, uh, chess is a bit different it's not like that you do this you will improve here you do this you will improve it's it's, it's a constant constant process keep learning new stuff do new stuff and see which is working for you if if you are able to find it you are lucky and then other other, uh, other thing is that you will be working on that and again the, you, there will be on stagnation point again you have to re reassess yourself and again you do the same thing so it's, it's not so easy you know it uh, yeah, it's and it's not so easy what is working for you sometimes it's very you will see something is working for you something even months years you may not find uh, what is working for you uh, because mm, that is also one skill i guess uh, big players have that they know what is exactly working for them and they follow that route that, and that route is not same for everyone you have to find that route that is the thing and uh, like you are one of the best players who handles failures like uh, very smoothly um, like i have seen you i haven't seen you frustrated that much like only once i remember that uh, after losing uh, the last round in check open you were little bit frustrated but overall like uh, i have not seen you like frustrated at all so like uh, how do you uh, deal with failures and how should like other people like uh, deal with failures i was frustrated in that fresh uh, check open because not because that uh, i just lost i lost like i didn't play well in the final round if you win you have a chance to become a champion and uh, yeah, especially i remember penultimate uh, round i played a fantastic game and then you come and play one of the most important game and i, I think after 20 moves uh, maybe before 20 moves i was just lost because i just blundered so of course uh, uh, it hits you very hard so but but even then yeah but in general uh, 
as I said, it's uh, well, like again, it depends. Yeah, uh, depends on some uh, individual personalities. I'm uh, maybe I'm uh, uh, in gen. I'm uh, in general. I'm not so you know moody person. I'm very jovial and uh, I like to talk to people, make fun. And uh, I have a lot of friends, and uh, I need to spend time with uh, people. And also, like I said, um, I always believe that there will be a that is next game tomorrow is there will come order and will play better. Uh, but yeah, um, I, I think again it also depends on an individual that how you take it, how you take each and every game. Uh, but I, I feel uh, it's, it's better uh, to maintain some distance and not to take a uh, chess very close to heart. I feel, of course, it's very close to heart, but it's, it's, uh, I think it's also important to maintain some distance, which is good for you and for your professional career as well. Yeah, and uh, like coming to your WhatsApp status, like you post this, uh, uh, like stoic, stoicism, Taoism quotes, and also you post a lot of Buddhism quotes. So what philosophy do you believe in, in general? Uh, so why do you post all this? Oh, quotes be, uh, no, before I was not completely, uh, like for before 10 years, uh, I was completely different, but uh, generally, um, like in 2013, I stayed in uh, Isha Yoga Center for almost two months. Uh, so that's how we, uh, I got interested in philosophy and uh, stuff like that. So oh, I like to read philosophical quotes and especially those books and uh, uh, related things. So that's how it all started. And, uh, and also it gives you a broad uh, idea about life yeah so it also makes you thin and you know, it's um, easy makes you easy that okay um, you are just uh, floating um, uh, the river um, uh, you never know you know uh, when things will go wrong or uh, you never know when uh, things will help you so you just keep floating and Hope for the best and uh, enjoy the scenery around you till then. So, like coming to the game, like uh, like during the game, uh, are you fully concentrated or do you think about other stuff as well? Uh, so, what do you think exactly during a game? I'm still struggling on that because sometimes I used to some songs will be going on in my mind. Uh, it depends, um, like, uh, but it's very, very important to concentrate uh, uh, fully. But sometimes, yeah, I, I also get the disturbance. And uh, suddenly, I say, okay, okay, now it's very important. Come back to chase, come back to chase, all the stuff. Yeah, it happens. I think it happens to most of the player. But uh, it's very important uh, to yeah, get yourself completely in and concentrate completely on chess while playing yeah so that uh, it yields result but uh, again uh, uh, i know people who used to do multitasking while even playing chess yeah <laughs> yeah like and coming to that like yeah some people have this uh, you know distraction and some uh, random thoughts come in like some people might be thinking about you know girls or something some people might be thinking about movies <laughs> So, like, uh, is it healthy? Yeah, it, 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 yeah. No, it, it happens. Yeah, you, I think it doesn't matter, but it happens. Yeah, natural process. Like, so suddenly you think of something else and then you come back to chess. Not just in chess, even uh, I think if you are doing, uh, when you are uh, into some job, suddenly some distraction may happen. You might be thinking of something else. Yeah, it happens. So, there is no particular thing like that. It should not be there, but yeah, you have to, it's better if it is not there. So you have to, probably you have to work on that. And uh, yeah, but it, but it's a natural thing. Yeah, Everyone uh, goes through it, I, I guess. 
and uh, okay i am saravana krishna asked a question like generally you wants you to explain the logic of uh, you know the going with uh, flow thing so <laughs> what is the uh, like process behind that and what can you elaborate uh, that going with the flow thing see like uh, i think if you if you some 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 up of what i have said so far it is going with the flow thing i guess Yeah. <laughs> it's not a, a particular thing like uh, it is about a lifestyle i guess that um, easy attitude um, um, and also balancing your life um, and also knowing stuff yeah like uh, a thing is for sure and uh, you might get everything also so just uh, hope for the best enjoy life Uh, that is i guess is going with the flow thing yeah that is like one of the unique ad- i think very few people have this attitude like going with the flow and stuff and like you are one of those people i know and okay let's come to the preparation <laughs> like uh, preparation during the tournament like i have never seen you uh, like i have seen you uh, i have stayed with you in uh, delhi open chennai open and i think sharja uh in delhi and uh, chennai open you didn't even open the laptop <laughs> but still okay i think you are playing quite good uh sharja you opened for little bit here and there so generally how do you like play well in spite of not preparing uh, for the rounds you know i will tell you one story in 2009 i won sydney open i guess sydney uh, no uh, yeah uh, um deep singh gupta one or become second i don't know um, i i went to australia without laptop uh, just to see how it works uh yeah okay i am uh, see of course um, nowadays preparation is very very important thing and uh, i see chest uh, uh, well uh, playing a tournament sometimes i when i feel like okay this guy is good at openings and he is going to do some stuff like this that then i generally check otherwise as i said i, I believe in um, playing well over the board but i think nowadays opening is very very important uh, all those who are listening it's not like that opening is not important that i am just uh, outdated on openings i guess but now i am i am also trying to come in openings because uh, all you guys are very strong in opening so i am doing my best but uh, yeah uh, opening is very important but uh, opening is not just important everything else in chess is also important and yeah uh, people should realize that uh, opening gives you the path but uh, remaining game uh, is up to you how you handle it it's very important and uh, See, it's not that uh, in 2006 uh, when I became grandmaster, it was really I, I worked with Ubila almost for two months. I uh, and uh, and I was working with Vishwesh for an hour. I was spending a lot of time on openings. Not that I didn't do, and I became grandmaster with uh, uh, in those days. Uh, I even played some novelties. It will it will become a, it, will, it will be a very shocking uh, news for uh, many people <laughs> who doesn't know that people are not playing novelty, but uh, those were there were times. but then i did uh, probably it's a mistake concentrate or i didn't put uh, enough effort on openings but then again i'm trying to you know um, to fill the bridge now i'm working hard let's see but uh, uh, about that uh, in general uh, uh, the question you asked me that uh, how you are able to do it because i i think it's it's, uh, it's a self belief and uh, uh you believe in yourself that okay after all uh, uh for everyone uh, knight and bishop queen rook pawn everything will move the same it's not different yeah. so that's how it is yeah that is really great so like uh, would you recommend this uh, technique to everyone no 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 <laughs> i want i already said that Uh, whether you are watching my videos or uh, interview it's, it's all up to you guys what to take and what not to take i'm just yeah. going to be honest 
and uh, okay i am nitin uh, okay he told me one story uh, like he told me that you prepare only for like you prepare uh, during festivals like diwali or uh, something like that and you don't prepare uh, like uh, for the rest of the year or something so do you think uh, do you believe that's true what is it and like if it's true like why do you do that no 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 here yeah. <laughs> no, the Nitin Saravana, all are my one of my very good friends like you. So, lot of things about me, but they also exaggerate things now and then. Yeah. Uh, see, I I prepare openings. I I work on endings, and I generally nowadays I uh, what I do is I analyze games. Uh, uh like all these big players game nowadays even computer chess uh, i'm really fond of i used to just sit and analyze when two machines are playing what is the point all those stuff so all these things i do uh so probably it gives you some some some, some ideas you know it gives you some ideas Just. Yeah. So it really works that way, I guess, because uh, I feel that uh, the m- most important thing I, I, is that uh, the flow of a particular game. You have, you, you have to you really try hard to understand it. Um, yeah, that is every true. every game uh, you. every game you really go through it in details depth and try to understand the, the flow of the game like how they are conducting the game if you are able to understand that um, it really helps you in your overall develop development of chess i guess yeah so since you were mentioning about like watching live games and analyzing your game so first of all like i have seen you that i haven't seen you preparing but i've seen you following live games in follow chess or uh, you know analyzing them or talking about them so like how should one uh, watch live games uh, and uh, try to learn from them see um, uh, so always it's one of the most important rule uh, everyone knows if you're really serious about uh, improving chess that uh, important thing is to switch off the engine and start analyzing a uh, engine you can just uh, probably you can check with engine only whether your analysis is uh, uh, good or not uh, probably after the, the uh, for, uh, after the your analysis uh, complete you have to analyze your game or any let's not talk about live i will live chess i will come to live game uh, afterwards if you are if you are in uh, seeing some game is very good and uh, you the thing is you just go through the game and you just ask yourself a question and you try to find the answer and you analyze the game and then probably you can check those analyses with engines because you might have missed some silly mistakes it happens those things you can uh, check with engines but uh, uh, you develop your analyzing skills and your general strength only through analyzing the games of good players and also your particular own game that is very important i guess so that's how it works i i feel and uh, when live chess uh, i live chess because uh, you know we we all are chess players and uh, um, um, and uh, live chess is of course very interesting because you do, you you don't know the results result yet yeah All, always uh, when you know don't know the result it is more uh, interesting so you see live games and you check whether uh, your move is uh, uh, there will be always some two three moves you comes to your mind and just check whether the, the big guys uh, elite guys are playing those moves then then uh, you, you know the okay um, uh, you know that uh, your intuition is not so bad or something if they guys are playing some other moves then you you try to find the reason behind those moves so it really helps you to develop as a complete chess player 
yeah yeah that's true and like how do you analyze your uh, games uh, before answering that like i would like to tell a story which uh, i am nitin <laughs> again told me once like once he was uh, uh, surprised to see you opening the laptop so he was so curious that he was uh, looking at what you were doing <laughs> so, so and then he found out that you are uh, checking uh, some game with the engine and like after uh, like you unlisted it for one hour or something and then uh, you just pressed you didn't save the game you just closed it and uh, that's all that you closed the laptop so generally and he was like uh, okay he was so surprised that he, he unlisted for one hour and he didn't save the game so he, he was so surprised so generally like uh, people have this habit of you know uh, Uh, saving the game and sometimes they analyze uh, so generally uh, so my question is how do you generally analyze your game and why do you not no, i I, i do no 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 it's not that i uh, don't save games at all i also save certain things uh, even theoretical things i used to save now and then uh, even games but uh, it's all depends on your you know that uh, what do you feel sometimes you feel the it's but it's up to the individual i think uh, generally it's better to save everything because you don't miss but i am uh, you know a bit adventurous person sometimes i feel okay it's not necessary to save because i remember those things and it's, it's this portion comes i uh, i can play i can handle it so uh, it's, it's it's a spontaneous thing it's nothing to be uh, really looked into it there is nothing to really look into it it's a spontaneous thing and uh, uh general i if i if i feel it's very important and uh, very necessary i do save things yeah and like how to analyze a game prop like uh, there is a old school that uh, you just put the analyze the game with the chess board and then uh, maybe check it with the engine or something and like now many modern players are just you know opening the engine and checking what uh, mistake they did and they are just uh, they are just uh, closing it or saving it so how should one properly analyze a chess game see i generally used to analyze uh, uh, on over the wise even now i prefer over the board but you know due to technology and all those like like you can uh, in uh, follow chess you can sleep and you can analyze all those things are there but 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 in general i even now when i get time i used to i prefer over the board i used to set the boards and i use my laptop this side and i used to make moves over the board and i check over the board and i analyze and i think it's, it's uh, um, how do you analyze the game is there all over in most of the book uh, it's, it's up to the, you have to first check your rhythm whether it's matching with the moves that is the most important thing i guess other things you will learn that um, it doesn't i uh, it looks very odd that i explaining that you this that it, there is nothing like this it's very simple terms if i want to say you have to check with your rhythm whether it's it's matching with your moves and it's going with the flow and the ideas you're getting to actually make any sense then you, uh, your rhythm is good and uh, as i said then uh, you have to go with the flow yeah that's great and let's come to the like chess part like let's start with openings like you play a lot of openings and like you, as i said like you you're not worried about your opponent's preparation or something so how can one uh, manage to play a lot of openings and uh, play it successfully see yeah sir some variations i really know in depth some i have some ideas but i am i am ready to take the challenge uh, that uh, i as i said i am very adventurous uh, and also i would like to do, to create things over the board and uh, check and uh, one of the most important thing i am not worried much about my results nowadays uh, like uh, it's not that i'm uh, okay if something goes wrong and i'm if i'm uh, that if i lose the game i will be so okay it's not like that it's like i am eager to try new stuff and uh, uh, willing to take risk and i give uh, i'm re- ready to give all my best but even then if things goes wrong i'm okay with the result 
that is the attitude um, uh, because i know many people they just stick with the openings because it's not that they are not uh, imaginative or they are not because they are worried about their uh, result they just can't accept uh, the loss you know many big players that they see again it all depends on an individual it's, up, it's it, i'm not saying this is right or that is right i'm just giving the different perspective that's it of uh, the peop, uh, different players how they look into chess and how they play chess yeah so let's say i want to learn uh, uh, najraf for example so what should i do exactly how should i start uh, studying the opening and how should see, i see ob- obviously see uh, najraf or uh, renfield uh, for d4 uh, najraf for e4 these lines are uh, you need real really you need to uh, work hard and you have to spend lot of hours for sure because uh, uh, the right now i think uh, the theory is like if you don't know the theory uh, there's no point in playing those variations i guess especially even najraf i think it's okay but uh, uh, grenfield i think you need to know everything because um, even if you miss a sim- uh, one move i think uh, then there is no point in over the board thinking stuff it's already over i guess so if it depends see you have to choose your opening accordingly if you uh, if you are uh, if you want to play najidra or if you want to play as i say grenfell and all you have to really work on it and uh, you have to know the every detail of it otherwise there is no point if if you if you uh, yeah. uh, if you really work on it and if you know every details then it's a great opening to play opening choice um Um, and uh, like i said it uh, you have to choose accordingly for example if you play qgd even if you know uh, don't know much of a theory still you can manage yeah yeah true. just 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 for example i'm saying but uh, attitude doesn't go well with when you're playing grenfell yeah that is true or or uh, you you just gone want to go there and play kings indian yeah <laughs> you need real you need really good understanding uh, of uh, kings indian setup preparation only then you can go and play kings indian stuff same uh, for uh, 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 e4 against e4 uh, i guess uh, nowadays for almost everything a uh, lot of uh, theory is there so if 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 now to be a chess player at least to the, you need basic theoretical knowledge at least otherwise you there is no point in playing any opening actually because it's there are so much things so you need basic understanding knowledge and um, i generally feel if you have chess uh, if you know uh, uh, um, in general uh, the chess ethics like how where to put the pieces and uh, the coordinates as i said the rhythm i think if you know the basics and some ideas of some um, games uh, you can play any openings you want apart from some very uh, as i said like very serious opening other opening i think if you have the really nice chess understanding you can play it's not bad actually because it it helps you to to, to understand may uh, so many i uh, ideas you know ch- different kind of pawn kinds of pawn structures uh, different kinds of position you will get to play when you play a lot of variation so overall um, you become a strong chess player it gives you a lot of ideas how to handle positions which i feel will help you in a long term yeah and like uh, how should one develop this understanding you are talking about like, there are so many resources out there books are there uh, like many databases video series are there so how should one uh, develop the understanding of an opening see it's, it's, it's not a, it's understanding of opening i am talking about understanding in general uh, you develop understanding only as a, uh, going through a lot of uh, elite players games and uh, as i uh, as i think uh, to match your rhythm that okay uh, uh, to understand uh, the way they play uh, you know so if you uh, if you see how they are handling their pawn structures how they are 
placing their pieces all those things it's it's not a particular uh, uh, gui- gui- guidance like that you have to do this 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 or that you have to just as i said you have to invest a lot of time understanding i think uh, generally comes only with uh, uh, experience so means that you uh, when you are investing lot of time on um, chess and uh, going through the gates naturally yeah, your understanding you will develop your understanding which will help you the main thing is i i generally feel uh, every person so uh, feeling is different there some people are very emotional some people are not that emotional so uh, the rhythm also changes accordingly so it's very important to match your rhythm of the game like how you are thinking the process how you are playing whether it, it makes any sense see sometimes even a big guys can uh, play something differently and your rhythm might be completely different but not not that it's wrong you have to check with the uh, you have to analyze with your friends and then you have to check with the engineers because who knows your um, uh, rhythm might be exceptionally well yeah. the flow to the particular position so as i said uh, you should not underestimate yourself you start you should not overestimate yourself believe in the process and keep uh, learning new stuff uh, definitely it will improve your understanding and it will yield the results in the long term yeah, yeah. and uh, ari krishna uh, uh, is saying that you played c4 e5 a3 against him so uh, like how to <laughs> uh, like this creativity where does it come from and like let's say if people want to play creative chess like this um, how should they like uh, get this creativity how should they learn this creativity see i have uh, It's not just me. Many people have played, but if I, if you say me, the the, the greatest uh, creativity move, opening moves, I think it should be Arvind Chidambaram's NF3 Rook G1. A C4 A3 still makes sense, yeah. yeah. NF3 Rook G1 is, uh, you know, I uh, I. Uh, generally i like to train new stuff but i even even i couldn't repeat that nf3 and rook g1 because i find the logic yeah uh, it's arvind is behind me uh, because he, uh, very strong he is he is strong chess player no doubt about that but nf3 rook g1 is <laughs> i think c4 a3 makes lot of sense yeah, it doesn't uh, it is completely playable i guess yeah yeah it is very a c4 a3 e3 and probably you are uh, reversing sicilian yeah so it's not a big deal but nf3 rook g1 you need real courage i guess <laughs> yeah true like i have seen you play like e4 c5 knight a3 and all and like the other stuff as well like i have seen you play so i so knight, uh, have not played many e4 c5 knight a3 but uh, uh, what about the person uh, on 26 i used to play uh, Lot and uh, I re- I remember even Sasi and I played uh, e4 c5 knight a3 some quite sometimes only then uh, I started uh, playing but uh, I have not played much but you know in chess um, and uh, especially now like before and all they had uh, they used to say that oh no 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 you can't play like this you can't play that now with the boom of this uh, engines and stuff you can see that uh, almost everything is. Play a brain chess. There is not, no, there is not, nothing like that. Okay, you can't do this, you can't do that. Means there is exception to everything. And uh, if you find engines are you, um, using all those exceptions only, they're uh, breaking the rules. I mean, yeah, because uh, you just go through engine games. They their ratings are some thirty five, three thousand five hundred, three thousand four hundred, and they play very non human moves. and um, you you can't come because all these years of study you have learned that you should, not, you should develop the piece but in this sometimes they just don't care about piece development and and sometimes uh, they just uh, and in alpha zero games if you go through it just uh, unbelievable yeah sacrificing the pieces just to, for some space uh, and they are saying it's fine so now you understand now you really know the depth of chess it's not just uh, it's, it's depth of chess is huge yeah 
it's all like almost everything is playable it's most important thing is that whether you are getting that rhythm you, you are feeling nice then that particular uh, position or particular way of playing is more important i guess yeah but even uh, i play some kind of uh, this kind of openings and sometimes uh, like i i have uh, tried this against like 2600 players also and like when i lose uh, badly i have this uh, regret that why did i play uh, this opening on that particular day so okay i do play some creative chess but uh, sometimes i have this regret when i lose that why did i play this opening so do you have the same regret uh, or something like that Uh, when you lose uh, when you play creatively and lose yeah uh, see uh, uh, um the thing is that um, i feel bad that i lost that particular game but i don't feel that i chose this opening i i don't think that is right attitude i mean because uh, that is literally anything you can play nowadays all you need is that uh, uh, top moves should be you know if you understand see you need basic understanding for chess like uh, then i i believe that uh, any opening uh, you will be able to play reasonably well if you know uh, you have that basic understand and uh, the most important thing i feel is that uh, it's not that you are trade this and you are lost but the thing is you have to come back and probably you have to work on that op- opening so that uh, what went wrong so that it adds it gives you uh, adds on your strength so everything you have to take as a, in a positive note and uh, uh, keep fighting that's what i believe yeah true true and uh, like there are like uh, there are so many chess books uh, which might have helped you in your career so can you name some of the chess books uh, which helped you and you would recommend to all the viewers for chess improvement uh, in general the two books i really like most uh, even now that is the fire on board by shiro and uh, i think my life and my games by kramnik one of the Uh, yeah. uh, these two books had a very great impact on me because uh, both these books are completely different and uh, both players are completely di- different and uh, gives you uh, overall idea there are a lot of books of course but i would recommend uh, these two books first and then uh, other book because games of zero and games of family can teach you uh, almost uh, uh, both the styles completely i see yeah and like how to study a chess book like you if, uh, let's say uh, let's take fire on the board for example like there is a whole game and uh, we usually see the next move quickly uh, like some people suggest that you should hide the next move and yeah, these two books and of course uh, of course all dvorsky's book yeah, yeah. all dvorsky books also dvorsky's sorry yeah, yeah what was the question so yes yeah, so generally how should one study a chess book like there are so many ways like some people i think nimzovich suggested that you should hide the like moves of the game and you should try to guess uh, what the player has played and there are like i think there must be other ways to study a book or something so generally what do you recommend and how do you study a chess book See, it depends on every individual again yeah there is no particular thing like that you have to do this for example uh, even there are a lot of books of uh, uh, complete solving books yeah you there is a position you have to solve like uh, i know some people uh, if they don't solve they will just think 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 it doesn't matter how much time they take they will solve and then they will pass and also i know people uh, who used to think for 15 minutes and then if they didn't find answer and they'll just go and see the answer so it's that is nothing like you do this or that it, it it's again comes to individual taste it's the basic thing is i think if you are able to take the essence of the position um, um ideas or the concept how it works if if i think it is most important if it goes and registers in your mind then definitely you know uh, while playing um, you would be able to reproduce that or when such kind of ideas happens you will be able to connect to them so that is more important i guess and same way with any books that 
most important thing is that you have to try to understand the concept logic and if you are able to regi uh, register that in your mind then see it's not memory that you have to memorize it and then go there and do it you have to understand it so that uh, if such kind of scenarios happens in different many it happens it happens in many ways different like those ideas concepts will come in uh, so many un unbelievable ways the, those times you can relate to that and you will be able to do that you will be able to find those uh, similar um, ideas concept strategy or uh, combination so that is uh, very important i guess so it's basically it's it's a depth that you try to understand things logic behind uh, the moves Yeah, other concepts yeah yeah true and recently like nowadays uh, chess able is becoming very popular and there is this thing called uh, mo trainer uh, technology where uh, okay they have this all these books and they converted into like mo trainer where you keep on doing the same puzzle i think around three or four times and like it's like uh, kind of like memorization technique uh, i think something like that so what do you think about that technology like and also like there is this woodpecker method uh, to solve the book uh, for you know more than couple of times or uh, seven times or uh, whatever number yeah. there is so what do you think about that repetition and this mo trainer technology see i don't have much experience uh, i guess uh, to answer this questions uh but uh, as i said i generally feel that uh, uh you um, for example let's say uh, you are uh, you want to improve on tactics let's say the more i i i feel or uh, if you want to improve on uh, your strategical thinking all those stuff i think everything goes to same that you go through a game analyze stuff or um, you solve you try to solve um uh, you give everything um uh, like uh, put full effort and work really hard and uh, i think that's how it works um, and um, there is no particular skill like you said like the woodpecker method or that uh, method there is not okay different methods there are a lot of stuff like that but as i said um, which is working for you only you you can find it then the, that is the biggest skill i think in, for an individual if you are able to do that you, uh, you will feel uh, the growth rate of your success will be really on par with the elite but but many people um, it's very difficult because we don't know which really works and also it keeps changing at one stage something will be working for you and again after certain points again you have to keep um, Trying new stuff because now the same thing won't work again. So it's a continuous process. There is nothing like particular method works. It's a continuous process. Keep working and find uh, which is working for you and do that till the stagnation point. And then again, it's a again um, keep working. Uh, try different stuff. Find something. It's a, it's a process. There is no end to this process. and like before moving forward ari krishna says that uh, i don't uh, prepare i also don't prepare during the tournament it is not true ari krishna you can ask deepan anna he saw me like i prepare little bit and you can uh, deepan anna can confirm that so anyway let's move forward and like yeah, yeah of course preparation nowadays is very very important yeah there is no denying the fact this openings are the most crucial part nowadays you have to agree there yeah is and it's always good to have some uh, knowledge yeah. i it's better to prepare yeah uh, uh, it makes sense at least to have some ideas about your house yeah it really helps you um, like gives you uh, basic understanding yeah which yeah. really helps you i guess it's important to see it's not that you uh, you have to do this or do, do do that you have to do what makes sense and what is working for you that's it yeah and uh, okay like uh, there are things like which we don't like to do but uh, we have to do that in order to succeed for example i don't like to study 
theoretical end games by now i think uh, for viewers who have watched all my episodes they know that i don't like to do study end games so generally how should i force myself in studying uh, end games i i i feel that it's important to study end games but i don't like to study end games so how should see, it's, I, it's, uh, yeah it's same it's like it's like me studying openings yeah same <laughs> yeah you need to like i said it's you have to understand that uh, sometimes uh, for example i have to study openings at least i need to have some basic knowledge otherwise i'm not uh, it's not possible yeah same way you have to study end games otherwise see as i said you, to become an elite player like if you are having a, a really to break the 2700 barrier you have to be a complete chess player opening middle game end game you just can't uh, omit uh, one part of chess It's simply not possible. You have to understand that. You have to come with terms that okay, everything is important. You have to develop yourself accordingly. Only then you will uh, spend time on everything, and uh, that is how it works. I think it is not a question of whether you like or not. It's a question of whether it is uh, uh, relevant or not. Yeah. and like one question on uh, like how much uh, emphasis should one put on you know their own strengths and weaknesses and uh, yeah see it's always uh, like i said uh, it's good to know your strength and weakness so uh, while playing chess uh, uh, while playing you understand that what kind of position you should go for you should aim for yeah so it's always better to know your strength and weakness and also it makes sense that uh, to become a complete chess player you have to improve on every uh, area so it's not that you will work only on your strength or uh, you will work only on your weakness so that if there is no weakness uh, i will cover it nothing like that whatever you do let me tell you there will be your strength uh, certain areas you will have your strength and certain areas you will have your weakness doesn't matter the only thing is that you have to keep working and you are able to balance it that uh, you, that you can handle everything and uh, in, in your weakness you will not uh, uh, go down quickly or in your strength uh, 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 you will not be more confident you have to ba- balance that is that is most important is yeah. keep working on everything that's that's makes sense actually and like uh, do you play a lot of online blitz like personally i have not seen you uh, like i also don't play but i was playing it during the start of the covid uh, th- uh, period and i haven't seen you playing in online yeah, i i yeah, a lot of uh, time uh, like i see lo- online first of all you know in chess there are a lot of psychology and stuff all to that first of all you don't you, you can't look at your opponent's face i don't buy that actually yeah uh, attitude body language everything is important i feel and but online chess is completely different and uh, nowadays i am really playing now and then and working on it but generally yeah i don't uh, enjoy playing online chess that much i still enjoy it's not that but uh, uh, over the board game is so much fun we grow up like that online chess okay now there is no other option so people are doing it it's fine and uh, maybe i uh, uh, i should improve my online uh, chess skill also i guess i have to work on it because uh, i think at least next 6 months uh, especially in our country i don't know whether we'll play before 6 months i don't see actually right now If it happens it's good let's see yeah yeah so generally over the board yeah. tournament time see <laughs> yeah that is true i don't think it will uh, like everything will be normal very uh, like very soon so i guess we should yeah. start pl- practicing like and generally how, uh, like let's say over the board blitz or rapid like how can one uh, you know get better at those formats like some people might be very yeah. good at class i i for example see uh, like for online chess itself i would say that i uh, i play much better uh, over the board blitz than online blitz you know because it yeah, yeah, that's how it is uh, there is no clear reason i don't 
maybe you don't have the experience on online and like that and uh, now coming to your question that uh, blitz and uh, rapid i feel uh, see classic blitz and rapid uh, i generally feel the guys who are more intuitive intuitive and uh, they have the feel for the position they, they generally play better blitz and rapid and uh, well, classical i think uh, uh, people they need time yeah uh, i think if you want to become good at chess uh, good in uh, blitz and rapid you need to work on your intuition like i said that uh, rhythm flow you have to check that that uh, Uh, you are. Uh, if you look at the position, that uh, you should be able to. Some idea should be should uh, should be there. Like okay, these these things are there, and uh, some basic assessment assessment can be very tricky. But some basic assessment, okay, pawn structure, piece placement, open files, and uh, good pieces, bad pieces, all those stuff. And um, if you are able to spot that quickly. then the those people uh, are better at uh, blitz and also let me tell you blitz and rapid itself is quite big difference you can play a good blitz player but not rapid because um, i am um, i still remember um, in malaysia i guess um, i was playing a classical uh, event and uh, i uh, i'm not sure uh, malaysia open 2017 or 18 ali reza was also playing that tournament Rosa, and that guy was playing uh, rapid. He played rapid. Okay, I also played rapid, and uh, we were playing very bad rapid. Like I will, uh, he was also not playing well. And then he, the guy used, to, he, he had a chat and he told me that rapid is very tricky because you think blitz, it is blitz to play very fast, and in particular moment, opponent takes time, and he. Uh, so uh, and and your position is minus so uh, as i said it, it's it's about uh, intelligence level it's it's uh, you uh, in rapid you should know that uh, when should you should take time and think it's a skill blitz okay blitz is uh, like uh, i would say 70 or 80% 75% it's it not in your hand you know suddenly something might happen but uh, of course there is a skill but still but in uh, rapid again it's same that uh, you need to know uh, when to take a break and think it is a skill which i think you know, it develops that uh, it's it's a individual it's individual thing i guess yeah and like coming to like physical fitness and sleep do you think physical fitness is overrated or something and uh, sleep and all like you, I, i don't think you follow a routine or something i have never uh, seen you like follow a, like proper sleep routine so what do you think these factors are overrated in uh, like generally it's over no no it's, um, I, i would say it's overrated uh, actually uh, now i have reduced some by kg actually my weight because uh, uh, yes because in pandemic nothing else to do so uh, i thought at least i will um, now and then i will jog or i will do yoga all those stuff yeah uh, but but i think physical fitness is very very important because uh, you should not look at me or look at some other guys i think uh, you should look at the top elite and all these guys are extremely fit it's very simple that itself define the physical fitness is very very necessary and very important and it uh, gives you that extra uh, little bit of inch advantage over the board being fit definitely it is so of course youngsters should definitely work on their physical fitness no doubt about it and like uh, generally okay there are players like who are very disciplined like i interviewed uh, grandmaster sesi kiran who is like who follows a very strict routine and stuff yes sesi anna is different level of uh, <laughs> yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we can say we can we can say sesi kiran anna is that the end and i am the same thing certain <laughs> ways Okay, maybe not exactly true, but uh, yeah, maybe <laughs> little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and like coming to your like tournament wins and so on, like um, 
in my opinion i think like that national challengers win uh, uh, you won against uh, the final round you won against swapnil dopade and you became uh, national champion challengers champion uh, i feel that it is one of your biggest uh, like achievements uh, in terms of tournaments so like generally uh, how was your experience after and your feelings after winning the national challengers in 2017 Uh, it was really a good uh, thing to uh, good achievement uh, to have a national championship and uh, you know, twice i was very close to win uh, national premiers also first uh, thing uh, which always comes in my mind but okay that's how life it is you know sometimes you just uh, take uh, will give you the you will feel that it is there in your hand and suddenly it will be not there so yeah i missed national premiers if at least twice i feel i feel in second yeah uh, but yeah to become national challenger champion again becoming a champion of any event is actually a nice feeling and uh, i remember yeah because that was that pace you know when i take lot, took a lot of decision like no draw i will fight every game all the stuff i was redefining like okay we will do this we will do that we will not do that all the stuff and um, i remember in 2017 actually it was a bit of a roller coaster uh, tournament yeah because i lost uh, two games uh, in the beginning uh, or in the middle itself i was nowhere actually uh, i i was i i was five points out of eight if i'm not wrong eight rounds Yes, and, and I, won I won last my five games, and yeah, I, I won last my five games, and I become a champion. And uh, the most important thing, uh, very good uh, uh, about that is that uh, penultimate round, and uh, all those five games uh, was really good games, like I mean, uh, quality wise. And uh, penultimate games, I remember game I bet, uh, I think Grandmaster Kimanshu, it was nice game, and of course. Uh, and uh, of course the final game against swapnil i think it was bit of a psychology because i have already said this i, I think uh, in some interview with that he needs a uh, draw to become a champion you know already you need to adjust with the times that you like it is that you no know, you um, sometimes uh, see swapnil is a it's a very fighting player in general but uh, but that day I, uh, when i played grena kings in the end he opted for this opening d5 d5 queen d8 yeah. which itself shows that in normal terms he, he will not choose that line yeah yeah but it also gives you a uh, advantage that okay this guy is ready with draw so um, it's already uh, it's there that uh, you have to win to become a champion and uh, also i have a uh, history because i i do basically don't want to come second because i have been second enough times yes. so draw was never in my mind so i was going to go all out and uh, above that there is also this uh, uh, hint is giving that he is uh, happy with the draw which uh, gives you to push further you know and uh, that uh, and uh, that end game was uh, really nice end game actually very nice end game and uh, yeah i was uh, it was one of the most important victory i i feel of my chess career yeah yeah and like it was like i think very similar to this N- nigel short situation i think uh, he was uh, playing this uh, selection to candidates and he was facing i think guriyevich and he, wa- he needed to win the last round in order to qualify for the candidates and he played french and guriyev yeah, yeah, played yeah. e into d5 and he, he, yeah, yeah, nail yeah, shot exchange yeah. queens and it was very uh, not, not in terms of opening but uh, in ter- in terms of psychology it was very similar see, like uh, yeah see it's it, it's not that see if suppose so, so plays d5 regularly then it's different yeah 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 when he choose that for a particular game it clearly gives you gives a hint that the what he is expecting from this game yeah that so is so um, it it kinds of uh, release that pressure you know that okay you, 
you have a feeling that okay you can try maximum and at the worst maybe you can offer a draw you know the guy will accept it yeah because of the tournament situation so it gives you that uh, permission that to go all out in a way of course these things are uh, like nothing like that uh, he can refuse also of course but you know this is a psychological part i am talking about yeah. which is very very important i feel i feel so and also the end game you know i still remember rook knight rook knight and 4 4 points or 5 5 points or points i guess we end up and uh, again um, uh, uh, the pressure is there it was building my knight was slightly better play, placed that's it but the pressure is there you know he is searching for draw yeah that, that's where uh, he made a mistake i guess you should always play to the uh, uh, what position demands you should be able to give that you should not set your mind for some thing and then play because then you are not giving your uh, uh, uh you are not putting full ability i would say yeah yeah true so it's very very it's so it's very very necessary in that as that's what i'm saying that when uh, it's always tricky when you are near a drop to become a champion you should understand that uh, it's very important game and probably you should forget uh, okay it should be there it will be there in your back of mind and play uh, take the game as normal and try to play as normal as possible what you generally do and then okay when there is a clear chance that okay there is some clear draw uh, or you have to take the, that time you can decide now because you have that uh, extra luxury of taking a draw yeah. but before uh, the round itself you should not make your mind and go that's what i feel yeah very true and uh, that game in a sense uh, um, also uh, gave me uh, uh, much needed uh, success i feel yeah, yeah the yeah. tournament then i actually i crossed 25 50 yeah, probably we yeah. never in life you never know which really makes uh, that gives you that extra uh, thing which will push you probably we never know maybe that win was very very necessary for me uh, the championship yeah yeah true and it happened yeah and uh, coming to like your uh, age group uh, wins and all you won the asian junior and as you said like you also got fifth place in um, like na- world sub juniors and so generally it's always uh, special to win age group events um, like i managed to win only one uh, that too like very recently so like it always uh, feels special to win age group events so oh, how was your experience yeah. oh, everyone knows this yeah i won sub junior uh, nationals yeah and probably as i said it, it has been said many times i Feel really embarrassed uh, to repeat it uh, because from under eight to national premier, I have been second couple of times, yeah. <laughs> at least twice, yeah, twice or at least once, and uh, only sub junior was exceptional. Everything like under eight, ten, twelve, sub junior, junior nationals, national um, championship. Yeah, I have been second, and also you know. Um, uh, in lot of uh, international events i, I have won of course but i have become i have come second many a times like even this year in uh, uh, jan uh, mumbai uh, international open i finished yeah. second yeah uh, 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 yeah yeah sandeepan won the tournament yeah yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there is a big uh, uh, generally i feel uh, if uh, anyone is uh, um uh, uh, time for the first place there is a very high chances i will be i will get second place <laughs> because my tie break somehow it's always bad yeah yeah somehow yeah. somehow <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah but okay f- for me personally like until under uh, 15 i think like till under 15 i couldn't even finish like in top 
and i didn't do well in um, like age group even so generally what would your advice be to those players like who are generally decent players like uh, in their age group but when it comes to age group events they they don't perform well so what would your advice be to them see uh, of course age group uh, nowadays kids are uh, like the pressure is there it's not like that see age group tournaments are fine i think your aim should be to break that elite group that should be your overall aim so you concentrate on a overall uh, uh, development of chess your attitude the psychology all those things like fitness all these things are much more important i guess you just don't restrict yourself to this particular tournament have a broad picture and uh, work for a uh, long term goal like they say that uh, uh, if you uh, like if you really work uh, on your fitness on um, uh, on your chess on your uh, psychology your attitude it's not that you have to uh, have the Uh, time frame or goal set up that okay the, uh, before this age i should go there before like but if you keep working on that particular day day to day basis and keep focus focusing on, on uh, your uh, daily routines i think you will uh, naturally uh, go there yeah that is how law of nature works uh, so some final questions it's like rapid fire questions so you should uh... answer a little bit quickly and <laughs> rest you know what to do <laughs> it's rapid fire and all you never mentioned that <laughs> what is this party there is no fire in the questions now so don't worry <laughs> so okay yeah. uh, your favorite uh, uh, male chess player and favorite female chess player favorite male chess player is uh, obviously vishnu and anand Vishy uh, sir, and then uh, uh, female chess player, uh, uh, I would say Judith Polgar, of course. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you are uh, widely known as there is a nickname for you in Indian chess uh, that is Rajni Kant of Indian chess. So I would like to ask this question: Rajni Kant or Kamal Hasan? I didn't want to mention Ajit uh, because I think I know that you are a Ajit fan. So I am just uh, asking between Rajni Kant and Kamal Hasan. i like both of them yeah and uh, 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 I, i even i have no clue how that uh, name uh, came up it's all because of uh, shagar sir <laughs> yeah um your uh, favorite tournament in terms of memories like that you will remember forever actually my memory itself is pretty bad <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what made there are many tournaments i can't uh, pick particular one i guess yeah like wherever you go it's like usually fun only like uh, the players you are <laughs> yes you are yeah uh, i generally uh, there are a lot of tournaments uh, yeah true and and uh, one tournament uh, you will try to you want to forget about it in from your memory like you want to get rid of it from your memory it's definitely 2006 national uh, yeah yeah it, it still haunts my mind that i i just couldn't take off points in last two rounds yeah and uh, in terms of like success like which is the most uh, like most special tournament is it uh, national challenges or is it something else like your most uh, memorable tournament see i think the most memorable tournament is the tournament uh, where uh, uh, it's also the same tournament yeah, unfortunately uh that 2006 national because there i became a grand master yeah i finished my final gm now and become a grand master it's yeah it's what to do yeah it's it's a trick it's a tricky question i uh, i can't forget that in, in good times and in bad times both ways okay. and like final question like um, if you have to give uh, like uh, advice in a couple of sentence what we, what would be your advice to the viewers 
see there have been uh, uh, like uh, philosophical uh, terms have been into philosophy and reading stuff there have been a lot of quotes uh, which i really like and love and uh, so so many different quotes on different occasions but lately i feel there is this quote which is uh, probably it sums up everything in your life like um, it is the best and uh, the quote is that uh, life at best is better sweet yeah so can you explain the meaning i think it's for, very uh, simple as this can you explain the meaning little bit oh. for uh, people who are not fluent in english so <laughs> uh, i think if you are really interested uh, in um, the sport uh, life at best is better sweet uh, you will learn in depth and you will go through it uh, and you will understand like this yeah it's not uh, appropriate for me to explain because i think these things can't be explained yeah yeah true okay that yeah that's all the questions i had no? so thanks for coming thanks for sharing sharing your uh, you know knowledge and your your uh, journey as well your how you started chess and uh, along the way like how you worked and how uh, and this tournament as well it was very inspiring and hopefully like if the internet was better people could have seen your face more clearly but okay we that yeah. we have to blame only uh, geo fibernet i guess or act fibernet sorry act fibernet so, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah because it was very unfortunate yeah today i have to i'm, I'm actually connecting through my mobile device yeah because it's from morning some issue but yesterday it rained so i don't know what happened yeah um, and also um, Uh, my uh, best wishes to you party for your professional tournaments and uh, also your for this channel for doing thank great you. job and um, thank, thank you guys so much yeah happy that